morning, everyone. It is uh, 10 o'clock. My name is John Martin. I'm the chairman of the County Development Committee, and I call that committee's meeting of May 17th to order. Um, ask first, please, that the clerk call the roll. Brown? Brown here. Berman? Berman here. Ford? Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Iqbal present. Kenyon here. Monique? Present. Roz? Here. Caius? Caius present. Pirog? Shepro. Shepro present. You have a quorum. Thank you. Um, the minutes uh, for the 15th and the 19th uh, are deferred until the next regular meeting. My monthly financials are in your packet for your review. Do we have uh, public comment today uh, of any kind? I see none. I have no notice of what, but I take that back. I think they're here to speak. Okay, I think if you are making comments relative to a specific, a particular petition, we'll defer until that point in time. If you have anything otherwise, raise your hand now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Van Kirkhoff. Good morning, I'm Mark Van Kirkhoff, uh, Director of Development Community Services. Um, <clears throat> Building and zoning report, uh, things are uh, picking up. We're busy in the spring. Lots of people do home improvement projects, uh, decks, swimming pools, um, outbuildings, sheds. So things are uh, picking up. We have some large uh, homes also uh, under construction. And uh, the uh, uh, latest building in the Mill Creek Village Center is progressing nicely and our inspectors are out doing regular uh, visits and inspections on that. Um, uh, we're also working on uh, finalizing some changes to our uh, city view permitting system. We're sort of in the testing phase, uh, validation phase of that for a, uh, a switch over um, in the fall. And that will all lead up to uh, having a, a portal uh, for people to utilize for submitting their uh, applications and, and checking on them um, electronically. Uh, currently, we're doing that uh, uh, via email and, and electronic payments, uh, but this will even make that, you know, one step uh, further to be easier, particularly for our uh, repeat um, contractor uh, customers. Um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions to Mr. Van Kirkhoff? Shepro? Mr. Shepro. Uh, Mark, uh, just generally, how has the uh, foot traffic from the public been compared to sort of pre-COVID uh, now that most of our restrictions have been lifted? Sure, that's a great question. Uh, so pre-COVID, it's, it's probably about, um, for building permit traffic, probably about 25% of what it was. Uh, for zoning, um, land use, and other type questions, it's probably about 50%. Uh, we, when we initially reopened back uh, at the end of 2021 with regular office hours, we were getting about 1.5 people per day. Uh, we're currently you know, easily getting three or four. A lot of our special event permits that we're handling, a lot of those folks come in person. Um, so you know, we're definitely seeing a return to coming into the office to see us. But it would appear that it still is substantially lower than it was beforehand. Is that because we think that people are finding that it's just they're learning how to do things online or over the phone and so forth? Yeah, well, definitely the uh, online permit uh, application and, and payment process for, you know, 75% of our permits, they, they love it. I mean, before COVID, we made them come here. <laughs> to pay and pick up their permits. And uh, they really appreciate that. The contractors in particular, what they save in time and uh, travel, you know, to be able to do that is uh, greatly appreciated by them. And even, you know, when we have one-off, you know, permits by homeowners, they also appreciate that because they can submit an application from their home during the evening when they're not working, they can make the payment in the evening. They don't have to take, you know, time off of work to try to come in during our business hours. Uh, but those who come in for special assistance and questions, um, you know, find that very helpful. Thank you. That's just very encouraging to hear. <coughs> Anything else of Mr. Van Kirkhoff? 
And let's proceed to zoning petitions. The first being 4592. I, I should say, as we begin, I'm assuming that all speakers are here to address questions or issues as they arise. If in fact you wanna make a presentation before your matter is uh, discussed, let us know. Thank you. Go ahead. Good, good morning. The uh, first petition this morning is uh, number 4592, uh, Ryan Rogerson, Faith and Grace Family Farm. They're requesting rezoning on a portion of property from F1 district rural resident, or two uh, F1 rural residential and F2 district uh, for agriculture related sales, servicing, processing, research, warehousing and marketing with a special use for an event venue. Uh, this is the, uh, the two uh, subject uh, areas on the 2040 plan. It is in an area planned for agriculture. You can see the village of Big Rock a little bit to the uh, uh, east and again, a little bit to the west. Here it is on the zoning map. Again, you can see it's uh, area primarily zoned for agriculture, everything that's white. Red striping is in the village of Big Rock. And then we have a couple of other F1s along Wheeler Road. Here it is on the aerial. I can see vast area of uh, farmed area and then the uh, other <coughs> farmsteads and F1 residential uses along Wheeler Road. So here's a little bit close up of the existing uh, parcel. And a little bit more of a close up. Uh, you can see there is an existing house uh, in the uh, uh, northwest uh, corner. That'd be the uh, F1 zoning for the residential use. Um, the uh, balance of it would be F2 for the event venue. Um, there's existing structures on the property and existing driveways and areas that will all be uh, maintained and, and used for the, uh, the venue. Uh, here is the... Uh, plat of survey for zoning purposes, again, showing the F1 and the uh, area for F2. This is their uh, proposed uh, site plan in order to accommodate parking uh, during the event uh, venue season. Uh, they would have a uh, parking in the uh, grass uh, area to the west of the driveway. It does have a long uh, driveway off of Wheeler Road, which is uh, suitable for uh, people coming and going without backing up onto Wheeler Road and the uh, um, uh, easy walking to the different event venues. Uh, so uh, they uh, have uh, three buildings that pre be primarily used for the events. Um, uh, first one, the Alpha area, uh, maximum capacity of 250 uh, for, and here's a layout for the, uh, the structure. Uh, here's a photo of the existing structure with the large overhead door, um, some of the things that they would be looking to do for improvements to the building for the events. Uh, second building, uh, Bravo, of uh, smaller capacity, about 110, their conceptual layout for that building. And there's some photos of that existing structure. And then Charlie building, uh, somewhere in between a uh, maximum capacity of 150. And this is a more open air, three-sided uh, agricultural structure that they would be converting for the events. Uh, within their uh, petitions, they gave uh, um, photos to give a, a clear you know, vision of, of how the, the events would be used for outdoor uh, weddings, how the buildings would be uh, improved and how the site would work, including a bridal suite, future catering building, uh, future bathrooms. Um, in the short term, they would have uh, uh, the uh, bathroom trailers, some other uh, F2 uh, venue events uh, use similar uh, facilities instead of the standalone port of Johns or kind of a step up in uh, uh, use. Uh, staff recommendations, um, Water Resources Department had uh, comments in terms of if the uh, increase in the impervious area, a lot of the uh, buildings and impervious areas are already existing. 
a division of transportation. Uh, one stipulation was to dedicate 33 foot half right of way. Uh, my understanding is the petitioner is in discussions with KDOT about reducing the width of the dedication to reflect the prescriptive right of way. There's uh, quite an extensive fence in some of the area that would be in that 33 foot uh, that's um, currently in, um, in uh, being farmed. And they're looking to maybe have a, a 27 plus or minus foot dedication and then a, a highway easement. So I'm sure they'll we'll have that sorted out before it goes to the full board um, uh, meeting. Other stipulations, they wanna have a traffic impact study um, to review within three years of the zoning changes to evaluate various site events, frequency um, and ingress egress timing. Um, other, other recommended stipulation uh, was that they would widen the uh, access drive to 22 feet for a minimum of 100 feet on, to the property. Uh, again, that's for uh, traffic passing in and out. So there's not a spillover onto Wheeler Road. And finally, the health department he had a number of stipulations regarding food permits, catering companies, uh, septic system uh, to be evaluated for the max guest capacity and uh, that they may need to have a non-community well arrangement. Uh, staff recommended findings of fact that the rezoning would create a residential parcel for the existing home separate from the event venue. And the uh, F2 would be, um, that's been uh, proposed here is similar to other farm paced uh, event uh, venues that uh, we have. Uh, this was not applicable for the Regional Planning Commission. Zoning Board of, of Appeals recommended approval with the recommended stipulations. Uh, it's before you this morning. Um, there's quite a contingent from the uh, group uh, proposing the venue uh, here. I think they have a representative uh, who wants to make a few comments, um, but I'm also, staff's happy to answer any questions at this point as well. Thanks. Let's uh, entertain a motion first and then Mr. Kenyon moves. Mr. Fries seconds. Speaker. Good morning. My name is Carrie Hansen. I'm the Director of Planning and Government Services for Shopee Design Associates, located at 126 South Main in Oswego. Here on behalf of the petitioners, Faith and Grace Family Farm. Mark covered pretty much everything. Um, I did want to uh, go into a little bit more detail of our conversations with KDOT regarding the 33 foot right of way dedication. Um, I did speak with Keith McGraw um, and sent him uh, to consider uh, the compromise proposal, which is to dedicate the area and the prescriptive easement um, and then for the balance to the 33 feet to be handled in an easement for highway purposes. As Mark indicated, there is an extensive split rail fence along the frontage of the property, um, which is right at the edge of the prescriptive easement. And then the farming begins immediately on the north side of that fence and would result in a loss of approximately 6,000 square feet of crop area. Um, so we felt that the um, suggestion to do this combination certainly um, allowed us to continue to utilize the property in its current form. Uh, we have also spoken with Wade Thompson, uh, the Big Rock Township Highway Commissioner, who has indicated that he has no problems actually with the current situation um, and likewise would not have any issues if we went ahead with the compromise proposal on the right-of-way dedication. Um, we do have um, representatives of the Rogerson and Wagner families here to answer any questions that you might have about specific operations. Uh, we have no issues with any of the other stipulations requested by any of the departments, and we would respectfully request your favorable uh, response to our petition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fries. Um, yeah, this looks great. The site plan looks really good. You got parking, uh, the, the presentation and the plans all look really great the way you're gonna fix the buildings up. Um, I would say my only question or concern is uh, related to amplified music. Um, I know the one building was kind of open-sided on one side. Is there gonna be any scenario where a band would set up outside of the buildings? Um, 
we've had, I actually live by an event, like, or event place like this and you can hear the music for about a mile and a half on a good night. You get to enjoy it. <laughs> Hi all, my name is Carrie Rogerson. We live at 46 W428 Wheeler Road in Sugar Grove. When it comes to music, um, as you can see in the F1 zoning, that is our home. There are quite a few of us living in the home, so we are in fact our closest neighbors. Um, our closest neighbors to the west are 1,250 feet from us, and we have spoken with them, and they are our largest supporters. They are actually very excited about what we are doing. Um, the way that the sound travels out there, generally speaking, they are starting to plant right now. The wedding seasons go from April to November generally, and thankful for us, a majority of the time there will be crap between us that will that will serve as a very large barrier of sound. The way that our farmer farms, he does two years of corn and one year of beans, and we are really expecting that to cut down the sound as well. So uh, to answer my question, will there be outdoor? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, when it comes to music, we intend on having the, the DJs and the bands inside. Inside, okay. Because like I said, it, you can't, we can't count on crops as a sound barrier. Yeah. Um, and like I said, amplified music outdoors can go well over that 1,200 feet. So yeah, we're going to do our best to make sure that the that all of the sound equipment is is angled in a way to eliminate any issues with the neighbors. Okay, that would be my advice. Is uh, that's the one thing that could come back and bite us all. Yep. Uh, so thank you, <laughs> Mr. Berman. Uh, Berman here. Uh, what was the uh, amount of parking number of parking spaces? Was there a, a number on that? Yeah, there's 125. And actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that is uh, the county's requirement for assembly is one for every two people. The maximum capacity of, of this site, regardless of the capacity of each of the individual buildings, is going to be 250 people at any one time. Very so good. Eight. That was my second question. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, very good. I'm concerned, uh, you know, we have something larger than that with the, uh, some of the things we've seen in the past with uh, thousands of people coming or, or some kind of thing. So, Woodstock. What's, yes. At Woodstock, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we would be agreeing to that stipulation as part of the special use approval. Um, if for some reason it becomes wildly successful and there's pressure for it, we can't exceed that without coming back to you and revising that special use permit. Thank you, John. Um, Mark, there was something up there about the wells and it just kind of, we went through it pretty quickly. Will they have to increase uh, maybe their well pump for a larger capacity? I don't know how many they, wells they might be. Are... Um, this requirement comes up quite often whenever um, <clears throat> there's a, a public use of a site. It's actually a state of Illinois requirement uh, for um, a community well status. It just that means they have to have that uh, specifically registered with the state and they have the testing protocol. Um, when there's more than, I don't remember this, the, the exact number that triggers it, but it has to do with the number of people who would be drinking from the well over a specific period of time. Um, it's just a way of protecting public health and, and having the well tested uh, periodically. So, so the state of Illinois has given the go ahead already? Is that how? No, it's, it's something that they would do um, when they reach that capacity. Um, they work with our, our own county health department. Um, but with these petitions, uh, Aaron Rusher with our health department does a good job of making petitioners aware um, that this will be a requirement that they, they have to do. And then we, use, we add that in as a stipulation um, to also clarify that. I mean, I'm in favor of the project. It looks like a really good project, but uh, you know, when you're talking about serving water to 250 people and the dishwashers and the, well, the bathrooms will be separate. They'll be their own trailered uh, type enclosed bathrooms. But um, so that, that might be, I don't know, that seems like an issue to me, but. Um... Yeah, it's less of a capacity thing as a uh, public safety thing to have the water tested. Like how often then tested? By our... um, Aaron Rusher's not here this morning. I'm not sure the specifics on how often it's, okay. it's tested. Yeah. 
Just a point of clarification. Um, there will be no food service on, on the property, no food prep on the property. Now that makes a difference. It makes okay. a big, yeah, I, I, and yeah. that, if that helps, I'm, I'm glad. Um, okay. Everything will be brought in offsite. They'll have prep areas, but there will not be any food prep occurring on the okay. premises. Okay, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, that thank you. Mr. Caius? Yeah, Caius, that, yeah, that was the question I was uh, had, was about the water and the, I know you had a, the prep, this, a prep building for the food. So you won't be cooking anything or preparing it there other than just prepping. The, it says right in there, they, and that was a question I had about the water. They had, they may need to become a non-community well system mm -hmm. site if they meet this definition, transient non-community public water system. A, system that regularly serves an average of 25 persons daily for any 60 days out of the year. So it sounds like what you're asking for is well above what that definition on page 43 and your slides, page 43. I think it's my understanding and talking to the health department and staff has been incredibly helpful, by the way, in trying to explain this to a lay person yeah. <laughs> um, is that it's, it's cumulative throughout the year. It's averaged. So they would have to look at the frequency of the events. You know, if there's one or two a week for five months, does that translate then to the 25 persons daily for 60 days? So there's a, a formula I'm assuming that they use, <clears throat> excuse me, to evaluate that. Whatever that is, if we are required to supplement that in any way, we have no objection to doing that. Sounds great. They'd probably be thrilled to death if they had 250 people a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kenyon. Uh, it appears you've done a lot of planning and I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It's just kind of thing we need out here. It's bringing business out to Kane County. We hope so. <laughs> I, I have a question. I just want to make sure that I and the committee understand there's this discussion of the easement and the 30 foot ride dedication. Are we in accord with the applicant on that as we stand? Can I'll, we I'll defer that, that to, in, to KDOT. Um, that's something that they would work out with KDOT. Or far enough to the right. I, I will say I'm not involved in that, so I'm not as familiar with it at this time, but I know that we've done these kind, kind of things in the past, so I'm sure it's on the way, but we can um, get back to you and let you know for sure. Okay, but it's not an obstacle to... I don't see it as being an obstacle, no, particularly if the township supervisor was agreeing or the highway commissioner, as you said. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think it's a great project. Um, I like the way it looks, the layout. Look, it's been well thought out. And I guess if there, I'm a person, I'm a person who loves live music, but if there is an issue with sound, I could see space in the future where you can do some landscaping to try to help reduce that if that's possible. Um, but other than that, it's something great to see. So I'm looking forward to see how well it works out. Yeah, Good. call me when you're square dancing out there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that one looks, first. <laughs> looks like it's gonna be a close vote. So I, I <laughs> yeah. uh, would the clerk please, if there's no further questions, would the clerk please uh, call the roll? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, Maui Paul. Yes, sir. Uh, are we voting on the stipulation as stated or any other modification that has not been written down? What we're voting on is what is stated in the uh, application or on, the, on this agenda. Okay, great. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Wonicki? Yes. Braz? Braz, yes. Bias? Bias, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, folks. Thank you very much. Petition 4591. All right, thank you. Your next petition this morning is 4591 Brian Lunchow Farm Trust request rezoning from F District Farming to F1 District Farming to allow the existing home to be sold off from the farmland. Here it is on the 2040 plan. You can see it's an area uh, planned uh, for agriculture 
Uh, it's just to the uh, west and north of the village of Burlington. Here it is on the zoning map. Uh, you can see it's all uh, zoned uh, F district farming with a few other F1s along um, Burlington Road uh, going up towards the uh, northwest. Uh, here it is on an aerial. You can see it is an area predominantly farmed. Uh, here you can see it is um, one of two existing uh, homes on this stretch of Burlington Road, a uh, pretty tightly um, defined um, yard area with some trees uh, and then the rest of the farmland. Here's another close up of the property. Uh, here's the uh, survey uh, for the rezoning. Again, noting this will allow the uh, house to be sold off separately from the farmland. Staff recommendation for stipulations, uh, water resources has their, uh, this larger farm site contains significant amount of floodplain. No home is proposed at this time. In the future, if a home is built, uh, the elevation of the first floor would be determined by the base flood elevation. Um, elevation in the seasonal high water table. Uh, they also had their typical stipulation that if there's more than uh, so many square feet of impervious area added, uh, they would all fall under their review under the stormwater ordinance. Uh, the rezoning will allow the existing home to be sold off separately from the farmland. Uh, not applicable for the Regional Planning Commission, Region Zoning Board of Appeals recommended approval with the recommended staff stipulations. Um, it's before you this morning. Yes, hi, Barb. Uh, I'm trying to get a hold of it. I think. May we please have a motion? Oh. Mr. Second. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick Ford. Okay. Ford moves. Okay. Ms. Winnicky seconds. Do we have comments or questions? Hearing nine, Clerk Louise, call the roll. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Canyon? Yes. Monique? Yes. Braz? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Motion carries. Item C, Mr. Van Kirkhoff. Okay, also this morning we have a uh, minor variance to the approved site plan is part of the special use that's been granted to the MA Center. Um, the uh, zoning uh, ordinance for special uses uh, provides that if there are minor variations in the approved site plan for the special use, that the use of the development committee uh, have the authority to review and make those approvals for minor variations as opposed to going back through a whole uh, public hearing process and full board vote. Um, the uh, MA Center has requested um, use of that provision. Uh, we have uh, provided uh, the adjacent property owners and those within 250 feet a notice of their request for minor variation. Uh, this morning, we haven't received any, any comments or uh, concerns regarding those. Um, I will go through the presentation, um, but at the end, you can uh, either, uh, you can take a vote to either approve or deny the requested variance, or you also have the ability to, to send it back to the zoning board for a full public hearing if you uh, deem appropriate as well. So those are the, the options at the end of this. So they're requesting uh, minor variations to their special use site plan, um, particularly to the portion uh, related to the housing units um, layout. They wanna make a few adjustments uh, to the, the housing layout and type of units and locations of some of the units um, now that they've begun um, constructing and developing that portion uh, of it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the site, uh, this is a uh, uh, development that had, uh, or site that had originally been developed back in the 60s, uh, known as Broadview Academy. It was a boarding school and uh, um, summer uh, gathering site for the Seventh-day Adventist uh, denomination. Um, a number of years ago, uh, it was purchased by uh, the MA Center and uh, they have, uh, um, gotten their own special use for the property and have had some other adjustments to it in the past. Um, 
this is where it's located on Kesslinger Road. It's just uh, it's surrounded by the uh, King County Forest Reserve District. Uh, here it is on the zoning map indicating the, uh, the special use uh, over the entire site. Uh, here it is on uh, aerial. Uh, most of the campus is in the south uh, portion of the property. Uh, here's more of a close up. So this is the uh, currently approved uh, site plan. Um, if you look kind of in the middle of the site plan, there's a circle number one, uh, indicates an area of the, the housing that had been approved. Um, some of the, uh, just to the south of that ring road, um, there's some uh, also indicated as housing. You can see on the pattern on that, that there, uh, those units were proposed without any garages. They were gonna have separate parking and, and kind of walk up to those uh, smaller units. Uh, that's the area in which they're proposing to change. Uh, most specifically, uh, here's a close up of that. Again, you can see the, uh, the housing in that center portion. <clears throat> so what they're proposing uh, will not um, change the number or the density of the housing units uh, rather than have uh, that one section entirely be walk up uh, housing units. Uh, they now want to do uh, eight of those units, four buildings uh, to have attached uh, garages. And then addition, uh, two of the units would be uh, off of a, a existing gravel um, part of the roadway. Uh, on the western portion of that. And then they still would have six units uh, that would be smaller walk-up units uh, that are indicated with the letter C on this site plan. Um, in exchange for the, the change in that section, um, there's two other locations where they had on the original site plan proposed uh, connected uh, duplex units that they will not be constructing um, and that'll keep the, again, the number of uh, total number of units the same. So we felt as a staff that it was appropriate to have them go through the minor variance process uh, just to document and uh, have the committee's occurrence, concurrence and approval on the, uh, the change in the, the layout and, and uh, types of units, some of them, more of them having an attached garage. And with that, there is a representative from um, the MA Center, uh, Sangita here, if there's any additional questions that you might have for staff or that they might be able to answer. So again, uh, you as the <clears throat> development committee have the authority to approve or uh, <clears throat> deny or remand uh, this petition or application. Well, as, as Mr. Van Kirkhoff indicated, it's our prerogative to go one of three directions. I'm going to suggest a motion to approve but it. it's yours. Bar Fred, moves. Fry seconds. Mr. Fry seconds. Do we have comments or questions? Mr. Fry's. Yeah, this campus is in my district and I was uh, fortunate to work very closely with the MA Center staff over the years. As Mark said, this was the former Broadview Academy. It was closed for many, many years. Uh, the buildings were falling apart, paint peeling, the infrastructure, it's got its own sewer and water system. The infrastructure was kind of, um, going to seed. And uh, it's just been so fun to watch the entire campus come back to life. The lights are back on and they've done an amazing job on fixing up the existing buildings, uh, demoing some other buildings and, and building uh, some new units. Um, everything that you see on that site plan is at least a thousand feet off the nearest public road. And uh, also, as Mark said, the entire campus is surrounded by Kane County Forest Preserve. So it's kind of like its own uh, isolated little community back there. And uh, they've always uh, been a pleasure to work with and they've always done what we've asked of them and they've always done what they said they were going to do. So I uh, wholeheartedly support it. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to volunteer the same thing. I many times on my way out to Reams, <laughs> I could drive through this site and it's always fun to see how it matures and develops and what a great job is being done. So these changes are only minor and, and certainly beneficial in their mind to the continued health of the project. So I support it also. Um, Anybody just else? A quick comment. Just a very, they're a very welcoming community. Wonderful. 
wonderful people. I know I've gone with uh, Drew and his wife to some of the events there, and they've just been wonderful. Oh, great. I can't say enough about it. Mm -hmm. Looks like this is going to be another tough vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Moniki? Yes. Roz? Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Motion carries. Congratulations. Planning and special projects. Okay, you have in your packet the uh, monthly report from the activities of our planning and projects division of the development department, um, most of which are activities that get reported to either jobs committee or energy and environmental or agriculture committee. Um, this morning, I do have one item that I wanna point out that is an activity that uh, um, is reported through uh, this committee and that's uh, the work of our Historic Preservation Commission. And uh, I've invited Julia Tavong, who's our Historic Preservation Planner. Julia, if you wanna come on up uh, to, uh, to tell you a little bit about um, uh, something the commission just did, it's in your, your packet. You also may have read about it in Kane County Connects, uh, but uh, part of the benefit of Kane County having Historic Preservation Ordinance and Commission and a professional staff person uh, working with our landmark program is that we are under the state a certified local government and uh, it's because of our status as a certified local government that we were involved in reviewing a national register uh, nomination so uh, julie if you just want to say a little bit about that and the commission's response to the uh, national register nomination sure um, at their April 27th meeting, our Historic Preservation Commission reviewed the uh, George Crego Farm for um, designation as a National Register uh, listed historic place. Uh, the Crego Farm is in Blackberry Township. It's at 3S 584 Finley Road. It is just southwest of Illinois Route 47. And it's de it demonstrates the surviving a surviving 19th century farm. This historic site is comprised of 257 acres and has seven historic buildings. And our commission found that it met the criteria for the for National Register designation um, for uh, being a settlement property from 1852 to 1855 and for its agriculture um, from 1855 to 1920, um, and also for its architecture. So um, as being part of a CLG, we get to the Historic Preservation Commission gets to recommend or deny these um, designations. And um, if, if our commission had denied it, it would not move forward. So we're very happy that we have now our number six um, National Register of Historic Place for King County in unincorporated King County. Thank you. <clears throat> and that's all I have. If you want to, uh, unless there's any other questions, just place the report on file at the end of the meeting. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have subdivisions now, three issues. Uh, Deanne is not with us today, and we have a novice presenting, and I would like you all, therefore, to, to be gentle with her as, we, as she <laughs> proceeds. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Okay. Are we good, Blair? <clears throat> yep. Thank you. All right, our first item is uh, Deer Pond Woods. Uh, we had a few of these come through the committee in the last couple months. Um, this is the combination of uh, two, four lots into two. So it includes the uh, platification for the easements and dedication of new easements. Um, Deer Pond Woods, again, is located in St. Charles Township off of Randall Road, south of Redgate. Um, and just uh, for additional information, we've included the parcel sizes once they're combined. Lots 16 and 17 will create a 2.9 acre parcel, and lots 15 and 18 will combine into a 6.5 acre parcel. 
So this is again the location off of Randall Road. Um, here's the configuration of the existing lots. Again, we're looking at combining 16 and 17 and um, 18 and 15. So there is a e access easement and utility easement um, between two of the lots that would have accessed that rear lot. Um, so that would be the portion that would be vacated. Um, in addition, we would be vacating um, the easements along the shared lot lines and creating new easements along the new lot lines. And for 15 and 18, um, those would be combined into one lot. Um, those lots do have a conservation easement um, and a drainage easement platted on the, them, and that would not that would remain. Um, however, we would be vacating the easements between those two lots as well. So um, staff has reviewed this uh, plat of amendment. Uh, the amendment will not increase uh, density or reduce open space. Um, it's been agreed to by the adjoining neighbors and jurisdictional um, entities. The existing drainage easements for the pond, wetlands, and conservation easements will remain as platted. And if approved, uh, the owners will then use the plat act to relocate the property line to the appropriate location. So the amendment has the support of staff. And the um, developer is here if there's any questions. And yeah, we have a motion. Mr. Fries. I'll move it. Second. Berman second. Moves. Mr. Berman seconds. Mr. Fries. It just, uh, I'm very familiar with the subdivision and the, they're already very, very large lots. So uh, we're combining two lots into one in uh, two different cases, I think here. So uh, the density that was originally approved actually will be going down. So uh, it's totally supportive. Anyone else? Hearing, seeing no one, will the clerk please call the roll? Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Wonicki? Yes. Braz? Braz, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Motion carries. Win Oaks. Our next one is Win Oaks Lot 2. This is located in Plato Township, Section 27. Um, the lot size is one acre, and this would be adjusting the side, side yard setback along the south property line to 10 foot from 30 foot. This is the location of the lot. Um, it's off of Lens Road and Muirhead Road in Plato Township next to the Tamara Heights subdivision. This is a close up of the uh, lot as it sits today with an existing home in a detached garage. This is um, the issue uh, that caused this is there was originally when um, Plato Ridge a subdivision was platted, it was intended that there was going to be a road um, that would go through off of Muirhead at <clears throat> connecting to the property in the rear. However, as you can see in this one, that property was subdivided and the access is actually off of Lens Road. So um, there's no need for that a road to ever go through. And so, um, however, the, oh, let me get the right thing here. However, that, um, that setback is uh, placed such that it's like it's along a road right of way instead of a normal side yard <laughs> setback. So this is the proposed addition that the owner um, wishes to develop. So the existing uh, 30 foot setback being reduced to 10 foot would still allow an additional 10 foot between the edge of the home and the setback line. So staff re recommends the approval of this amendment. The amendment doesn't increase density or reduce open space. The amendment has been agreed to by the adjoining neighbors and jurisdictional entities and has the support of staff. We have a motion, please. Motion to approve. Berman. Ford seconds. Mr. Ford seconds. Mr. Berman moves. Uh, I have a question. How, how does this uh, setback compare then with the other houses in the, in the same area? The 10 foot setback is consistent with the other homes in that area. Okay. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Winnicki? Yes. Braz? Yes. Caius? 
Yes, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Motion carries. Oak Shadows. Our final subdivision item is Oak Shadows. It's located in Campton Township, Section 12. Um, the lot size would be 3.2 acres. Um, and it's the request for the approval of a vacation of an access easement, um, rededication of a drainage and utility easement, and revised setbacks for the consolidated lots. So they are asking to consolidate lots three and four. Um, this is the location. Um, it's just south of Silver Glen Road. Um, it's at the end of uh, um, a T intersection, basically at the end of Oak Shadows Lane. Um, this is the current configuration of lot three and four that um, the owner wants to combine into a single lot. <laughs> this is uh, the plat of consolidation that shows the, um, there was only a single driveway that was platted for the access of both those lots. Um, for the reason it's being consolidated, that's no longer required to have that access easement because it'll just be the one single owner. The setback lines uh, adjacent to all the um, nearby residents uh, are not changed. Um, it was a 30 foot setback on the west side and a 25 foot setback um, on the north side and those setback lines will remain with the consolidation. Um, we are recommending approval of this consolidation. It doesn't increase the overall density of the PDUD. Um, the adjustment doesn't decrease open space or affect the physical layout of the adjacent lots. Um, and there's no impact to public health, safety, and general welfare. We do have a um, neighboring property in the audience um, that may want to speak on this matter. May we? May we have a motion first? Kwonicki moves. Ms. Kwonicki moves. Mr. Fry is second. Ma'am, you want to speak? Yes. Please offer your name and address. Sure. My name is Iman Albazaz. I reside on 39W600 uh, Oak Shadows Lane, which is adjacent to the new two lots. And, and I have a couple of comments, actually. We, um, excuse, we excuse me. Can, I, want, I want to make sure we've got the geography straight. Where, where do you reside? It's, the, reside? it's the home to the west of lot three on the on the. I okay, know. thank you. Sure. I reside on lot number two, which is right next to it. Okay. Um, so the question, um, we totally support combining lot three and four and uh, the removal of the easements and we welcome our new neighbor. Um, in, the, in the drawing, we looked at it and it shows it number now lot number one, which is lot number one, it's already exists in the subdivision, which is one of the lots um, uh, the entrance of the subdivision. So I don't know why they um, number it as number one, because number one is already exist. We can adjust that in the plat um, when it comes through our office. Okay. okay. So we will make note of that. Sure. And um, also um, the north setback um, should be set at 90 feet. Um, uh, so as not to allow building in the area where buildings were not previously allowed in the previous um, setting with the north setback. And now it's, um, it's set to 25 uh, feet on the north setback. So previously supposed to be at 90 and not to allow building. Did you, sir, do you have a comment to that? The setback lines as we, um, evaluated them were, would remain the same. Um, I, I would have to research to find out where the 90 foot is coming from. Um, my understanding from Deanne is that the current setback on the north side is 25 feet and the west side is 30 feet and they, those would remain the same. Do we have a representative from the applicant present or online? I have a, I have a comment, um, Fraz speaking on the, uh, the site plan, the, the future site plan or proposed site plan, there's a pretty substantial setback on the north side there where it shows a building setback envelope and it's way over 25 feet. If I'm reading this correctly. Right 
where it's where it says lot one there that's in the middle of that building box and that's got huge setbacks to the north well we're kind of operating whistling in the wind here right uh, for for having i mean i'm not contesting what you're saying we just have no basis for moving this forward and i would i'm not comfortable voting on it or suggesting we vote on it until we get this issue resolved so um i would entertain a motion to table this so moved mr kenyon moves I'll second miss one nikki uh -huh. mr one nikki uh seconds just a question point of order do we um uh, to a, tabling it to a location or just back oh, to we can, the we can we can next I mean, meeting. It'll, it, we can take it off the table at the next meeting on assumption that the matter has been resolved. If it's solved by the next meeting, yeah. So I think to, just table, so just table it solution. generally, and and the hope would be that if the next meeting we've got the issue addressed by the developer and our staff. So okay, the motion to table having been made, let me please call the roll. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Ford. Board, yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Monique. Yes. Roz. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Motion carries. So the matter will be tabled. The presumption being that this issue can be resolved by our next meeting of this committee. And then it would, assuming that everything's, because I think everything else was uh, pretty ordinary, but we just don't have a basis to address the issue you've raised in your presentation. Okay. Actually, I obtained some documents, Ms. Diane Orlick. Uh, she printed out for me, and it shows the previous lot three, the setback, and the north setback was at, um, uh, the west side was at 60, and uh, the east side was 90. It's already in there, and I have the document with me well, as we well. Just, we just, it needs to become part of the discussion, Absolutely. I guess is what I'm saying. So. Yeah, I'll, we'll discuss. No problem. Thank All you. right, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that concludes subdivision activity. Is that correct, Ms. Walnick? Yes. Do we have anything relative to environmental resources or water resources? Nope. Okay, Mr. Berger. Good morning, Chairman Martin. This is Scott, and we do have one item for you today. Uh, it's a resolution regarding our homeless management information system, which you might recall is the online database that is used by both our office and area social service agencies uh, to help coordinate and track the needs of our homeless population. The resolution before you today authorizes a 12 month renewal of our contract with Pathways Community Network Institute. Uh, this is the firm that has provided support services uh, to our system since 2016. For 2022, Pathways proposal is just over $46,000. And just a reminder, 100% of the cost of this contract is covered with federal funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. May we please have a motion? Caius Moo. Mr. Caius Moo, Mr. Ford second. seconds. Do we have comments or questions of Mr. Berger? Hearing none. Clerk, please call the roll. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? One yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Nickball? Nickball's not again. I gotta quit answering my phone. Nickball? Uh, Kenyon? Yes. Well, Nikki? Yes. Braz? Braz, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Carries. Motion carries. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Is there any new business to be brought before this august body? <laughs> Seeing none. I move it, John. May we have, please, a motion to place our reports on file. Okay. That's true. Mr. Kenyon. <laughs> yes. Caius second. And Caio seconds. Clerk, please call the roll. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Ford. I got a question. Are we doing both of these together? No. <laughs> no, he's, yeah. totally, he's totally out of order. <laughs> I, I never know. That's not <laughs> unusual. Mr. Iqbal? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Monique? Yes. Roz? Roz, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. The reports are on file. Mr. Kenyon, do you have inclination to make sure. a motion? Go see our plan. 
We have a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned.